I'd like to welcome you guys today to the University of Arkansas Red Meat Abattoir here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. So they would be for, um, you know, moving hogs. Hogs are so low to the ground that it's really hard to hurt them. And you can use these as kind of a temporary wall to move the hogs around. So in our facility, we have a restraint box for hogs and cattle. Um, the animals come in through the chute and then we can restrain them in this chute uh, to humanely uh, render them unconscious. So prior to harvesting animals under inspection, whether that be state or USDA inspection, the animal has to be immobilized uh, prior to sticking or uh, bleeding the animal out. So for that, we use a variety of different equipment with that. The first uh, is electrical stunning, which here at the University of Arkansas, we use for stunning hogs. It sends a high voltage of electricity uh, to the central nervous system to go ahead and stun them. In addition, we have the bolt gun, um, which we use for stunning sheep and cattle. And what this does is it sends a forceful um, instrument into their skull, rendering them unconscious. Um, and so from this, we make sure that the animal is completely unconscious. And then we move into the next step, which is um, the exanguination stage or the bleeding stage, where we actually go ahead and start the harvest process on the animal. The animal has been uh, rendered unconscious with either the stun, uh, the captive bolt or the uh, electrical stun they would roll out here due to the slope of the floor inside the holding chute. And at this point, they're gonna get shackled up and they're also gonna get stuck so that they get bled out. And uh, so it's real important not only to have a, a good drain and a, and a way to catch all that blood, but as you can see, we've also got some safety uh, pipes here just in case an animal uh, gets up and it re allows the workers to get out of the way because sometimes, especially on a cow, uh, you've got a hind leg that's already starting to uh, involuntarily move around and, and it can hurt if it hits you in the shin the right way. But we want to get the animal shackled up is hopefully within 30 seconds, get them hoisted up, get them stuck so that they bleed out. Uh, one, for, for food safety reasons and also to create better quality meat by getting a good bleed on those animals but we've got to capture that. So not only is it a good, a nice to have a basin here to capture that blood, but also to have adequate uh, um, water flow here so that we can keep it washed down and keep it clean. Yeah, one of the purposes of hanging it on that hook like it is, it puts a lot of strain on the back muscles and that really stretches that tender muscles in the back and makes much more tender meat. And that happens during, while they're in this hot box. That's when rigor resolves and it really makes a difference in the quality of the meat. One of the key features in here, especially for doing beef carcasses, and also comes in handy if we're gonna split pork carcasses, is a big uh, bandsaw. So that while those carcasses, after they've been eviscerated, we'll actually split them down, down the spinal column to facilitate easier handling. Uh, some hogs, depending on the size of them, we may or may not split. Usually full-size hogs, we will split with this saw. And beef animals will also, also always split simply because it makes the carcass more manageable and cuts it down to size. So in this fabrication room, we have a variety of different equipment that we use. Uh, the first is our carcass chain. So what we do is we bring the uh, carcasses in from the hot box and bring them in. Um, we'll use that conveyor to go ahead and drop those carcasses down um, to better able to further fabricate those into different subprimals including the round, the chuck, the rib, and the loin and then further break that down into uh, other retail cuts. In addition we also have a vacuum packager in here which is very important for the storage of product and so what the vacuum packager will do will put stakes in vacuum bags and remove the entirety of the oxygen uh, out of the package so we can store those um, cuts for longer and uh, so they have a better shelf life. In addition, we have a vacuum stuffer which is used in the production of uh, processed meats um, including anything from fresh sausage like brats or pork sausage or breakfast sausage um, to as well as smoked sausage, kielbasa, any other type of equipment with that. And what it does is it helps us form nice even links um, for each of the different types of sausage that we do produce. 
We have a mixer grinder here and we use that for a variety of different purposes. We can use it to make ground beef um, and basically go ahead and take those large chunks of muscle and break it down into the typical grind that we see in the grocery store. We can also use the mixer function of this particular piece of equipment to go ahead and make sausage. Um, so that can be anything like a fresh sausage, such as a brat, where we're just adding spices and water and ice to go ahead and make that particular blend to something a little more complex like a smoked sausage where we go ahead and grind that, um, grind and mix the spices in, and then we'll go ahead and put it into the smokehouse. In this room, we have uh, a injector. Uh, that's a multi-needle injector. It's a really nice piece of equipment to have if you want to make uh, bacon, uh, hams. It, it will actually inject brine or pickle into the meat products that can go and be smoked. Um, so that's a really nice one if you're going to make a lot of processed meats products. Um, and then another item we have in there is a vacuum tumbler. And that's one, you take that injected product, you put it into a, a tumbling machine under vacuum. And that helps um, expand that uh, pickle and, and further disperse it within the product so you get a nice even um, distribution. Um, and so that's another really nice item to have if you're going to make a lot of processed meats, smoked meats. So this is our uh, Hollymatic automatic patty making machine. Um, this is a really nice item to have. Um, it will spit out patties of a specific size. Um, the dye we have will run it at well, one, one third pound patties. You can make round patties or square patties or you can make sausage patties with it if you wanted to. Um, it's a nice item to have if you think you're going to run a lot of ground beef from hamburger uh, type product. So this is our negative 20 uh, degree Celsius freezer that we use for storage of our products. Once we go ahead and finish fabricating them, we'll immediately freeze them uh, to preserve them at quality. So if I go ahead and open this. As you can see, we have a wide variety of products in here. Um, and it's primarily used for storage until um, if you were going to go ahead and sell the product, you can sell it out of the cooler, um, but it's mainly used for storage in this freezer. So if you're going to sell product directly to the public, you have to have a way to label and weigh that product. And so we're, we're really lucky to have a scale um, that weighs the product. Um, you can program all your pricing into it, um, and then you weigh it, and then it'll spit out a label that's got the product name, um, and then it'll have our, our inspection uh, stamp or inspection number there on it um, and so this is really nice to have you know you can weigh it and then program it in tell if it's a t-bone steak or a round roast or a lamb chop and then it'll know it'll calculate the right price per pound and then calculate the total price for that product you stick it on the label or uh, stick it on the package whether it's butcher wrapped or vacuum packaged and then your your products ready to sell to the customers one of the things that's critical to us and our HACCP program is adequate supplies of, of scalding hot water. And so we have a closed loop system here that is hooked up to a large uh, central boiler that pulls water off at, on demand. And this will keep our water at 180 degrees that circulates throughout the facility. We have adequate supply with uh, two inch plumbing running that hot water throughout the facility. So that whether we're washing a carcass or washing up at the end of the day, we don't have to wait on any hot water to get our uh, sanitation in line. Yeah, so inspectors will need either an office space of their own uh, where they can, um, they can keep their materials. Um, in our facility, we don't have a separate office for our inspectors, um, so he shares off. He would share office space with our meat lab manager, um, but he does have a locked cabinet that's labeled for USDA inspection, and he keeps his um, paperwork and materials that he needs locked away in here, and um, our plant employees don't have access to it. So you need some kind of office space. Uh, for inspectors to have on your on site or at least a shared space with the ability to have a locked cabinet.